Hi, everybody. Jason Smith here. Thank you for joining me for this episode of The Truth About Social Ads. I'm an agency owner specializing in Facebook and Instagram ads, and I have dedicated my professional life to helping you learn what others won't tell you about Facebook ads. You know, I believe there's so much information that no one is sharing about Facebook ads and how you can fail and win running ads for your business and when it's time to hire an agency. That's why I'm here bringing ideas and information that can help you run successful Facebook and Instagram ads. Hey, everybody. How you doing today? This is Jason Smith, your host of The Truth uh, About Facebook Ads. We're coming at you with a brand new episode. Sorry we've taken a break, but uh, things have been a little crazy. And uh, we're back with some new changes. I actually have a co-host now, which I'm super excited to bring on here. His name is Eric Bork. He's our VP of Operations at Spotlight Social. Hey, guys. How's it going? Super excited uh, to have him on. And uh, yeah, man, can't wait to talk about this episode. Eric, what are we what are we talking about today? We're talking about the iOS Apple update 14 point TBD um, <laughs> and how it's going to affect Facebook ads and what we can do about it. Yeah, this this is a huge topic right now. Man, it, it like I think Eric, the first time we found out about it, which was months ago, we were a little baffled, I guess, a little like, okay, what the hell is going to go on? And we're here to just give a, a super high level, just kind of like a rundown of what it is and some effects. We're not going to go into too much detail. I think we'll, we'll we'll dive into more detail in another episode, right, Eric? But we're just going like to give some nitty high level gritty. Stuff. But we're yeah. going to go over today, like what everyone needs to know. So everyone has an understanding of it and knows what they can do about it. And I will add to what you just said and say that we feel good about it now. Yeah, We're lucky to be a little bit bigger of an agency and have the resources that we have. But by the end of this episode, we want you guys to feel good about it. Yep, for sure. Yeah. And and we we have a checklist that we put together Eric, what's the, the URL for that? So, so, so if you guys want to it. download it, go to our website, spotlightsocialadvertising.com forward slash iOS. And it's a, it's a five page checklist of if you run Facebook ads, you got to take these actions now. Like if, if you don't have a partner manager and you need to do this on your own, download this PDF. It's there for you. Again, spotlightsocialadvertising.com forward slash iOS. And, yeah. and the checklist is there. Yeah. And it'll be super, it's just kind of basic information. It's nothing too complicated yet. In another episode, and I don't know exactly when we're going to record the next episode for like a deep dive into this, but it's just basic things you need to know about now. You know, kind of funny, I was telling Eric earlier before we jumped on to record the podcast, but I'm part of a mastermind group. It's Jason Swank's mastermind. Shout out to Jason there. <laughs> and, and, in the mastermind group today, we had for the first time in our mastermind group, we had all these breakout sessions, which was really cool. And I was the host of one of the breakout sessions about Facebook ads. And I had about, I don't know, eight or nine guys in the mastermind who wanted to learn more about how they could drive more leads to their agencies and you know all that stuff. And, and they had some basic Facebook questions about how to run campaigns and all this stuff. And Jason wanted us to start the breakout session by just talking for a brief five minutes at the beginning about something about Facebook ads that will be valuable. Well, in my mind, since we're an agency, Eric, I mean, I guess we lose sight of other people that they don't have the resources we do sometimes. So yeah. when I said, Hey, what, you know, does everybody know about the, the iOS changes coming up? And like literally half the guys in the group were like, wait, what, what do you got? What are you talking about? So that leads me to believe that not a lot of people know exactly what's going to go on, number one, but don't even really know that this could possibly impact how you run your ads. And if you wake up one day and ads managers like completely different and you're like, wait a second, how am I prioritizing events and doing all this stuff and registering my domain? Like what the hell is going on here? And, and you go from 50 conversions a week to 10, we're going to explain why this is going to happen and 
what steps Facebooks have taken. And we're just going to kind of go through our checklist here really quickly to let you guys know what's what's going on. Because I think it's important because I don't want... Would hate to have anybody get blindsided here. And we definitely do not take for granted the resources that we have at Facebook. And we're super grateful for them. And that's why I want to share it with everybody. So. Yep. All right. Well, let's start. Let's start by uh, talking about the problem. So I'm going to start with the sentence that we've heard, and one of those resources that Jason's talking about is we're lucky enough to have multiple account managers and partner managers inside Facebook. So they've sent us as an agency a presentation. You know, it's full NDA, and and they're they're going through a battle. So I'm going to start with this sentence, and then have Jason explain what the problem is. And the sentence is. Facebook strongly disagrees with the move that Apple is making. They believe that transparency and tracking can coexist at the same time. What Apple's doing, and Jason's going to explain it here in a second, is they're essentially, let's say they're a restaurant with other restaurants, they're making it so only their restaurant works. I don't know if that's the right analogy, but essentially, if people don't stop tracking, they're blocking them from the App Store. So that's an overview, Jason. Why don't you go over like the key points and the the main one that I think is helpful to understand is the prompt. So can you yeah. talk about what the prompt is? Yeah, so so basically when this rolls out, and just so you guys know, we, we don't have an official date of when this is actually going to take place. They're saying in a couple weeks, end of January, beginning of February, you know, I've heard January 21st, it's going to roll out. And then it's like, you know, and then it keeps getting pushed back. So, you know, I'm actually hoping that this is not going to take effect, but that's just wishful thinking. This is definitely going to going to happen. And so, like Eric said, the prompt, and I'm sure you guys have seen. So when you're on your phone and you log into an app, like, for example, there's a lot of apps right now, like Waze and like Google Maps and stuff. And a little prompt will pop up and say, you only want this to be running in the background when the app is open all the time or never, right? Yep. So it's going to kind of look something like that. When, when this new iOS update rolls out and you click on the Facebook app in your phone, a prompt is going to pop up. And we don't know the exact wording yet of what it's going to say, but it's going to say something to the effect of, do you want to allow Facebook to track your... What's the correct word I'm looking for here? Your activity probably. Your activity. Like that. There we go. Yeah, total brain fart there. Sorry. <laughs> um, track your activity while using Facebook. And it's going to say, yes, I do, or you opt in, or no, you don't. Facebook is telling us about 75 or 80% of people are going to say no to that prompt. If you say yes, you, you don't mind it, which I'm going to say yes, because honestly, I really don't mind, then you're good to go. Like Nothing changes. But if you say no, that's where the limited tracking is going to come into effect. And, you know, we'll get into some of the nitty gritty. And I, and what I don't want to do on the show today, Eric, is I don't want to like use all these acronyms and like confuse people. Like we're keeping yeah. it straight English here, straight layman's terms. Like I've listened to other podcasts where, you, you know, there's all this technical jargon and we're just going to keep it simple for everybody here because that's what we do here at the Truth About Facebook ads, right? We keep it simple so everybody can understand. I was at, you know, several years ago, I was at a place where I didn't even know what a pixel was, or I didn't even know you could run ads on Facebook, right? So, so we want to keep it as simple as possible. So really, it, it, it's going to be a huge impact on how things are tracked, what they call an attribution window, which essentially means like, if I log in and see an ad today, but then I buy three weeks later, normally the attribution goes to that first ad that I saw. And I know that's a little complicated, but We're going to talk a little bit about that today and just kind of run through our checklist. So we're all on the same page here. And feel free to reach out to us with any questions or concerns or, hey, I don't understand what the hell's going on here. Please let us know. And, you know, Eric and I can can hopefully help you guys with uh, with how to proceed with this. But it's a big deal. Like, it's a huge deal. So you should know about this. And I even have a lot of questions that are unanswered still about the platform, like how things are going to change with optimization and, you know, all kinds of stuff, right? But we do know, we feel pretty good. Like it's not going to affect us to the point where we're going to go out of business or people aren't going to be able to track anything at all on Facebook. It's just limited on what we can do, right, Eric? I hope I explained that 
Yeah, correctly. and I'll, I'll kind of add to that and say, for the more advanced Facebook people, they, they already know at listening to this, like the impact that it's going to have. But for anybody that doesn't know the impact, I'll give a very short. One day, you're probably going to wake up and as this prompt rolls out, 70% of people are going to say, don't track me. And so your Facebook business manager, which is what we live and die by at the moment, you're going to start seeing your numbers not reflected in there accurately because people can't be tracked. So that's part of the solution we'll get to in the end is how to accurately view those. But that's why it's such a big deal is you need to be able to report back to your clients and let them know how you're doing. So yeah, it's a huge deal. It's a huge deal. So Now, real quick, can you touch on the App Store and why Apple has this leverage? Because they do have leverage here and it is a big deal of how they're pushing their way in. And I'll be honest, this is the first time where I've ever looked at Apple and been like, you guys are not cool. Like, <laughs> yeah. like what they're doing is not cool. Um, yep, for sure. They, they could have worked with the industry. And that's the point that Facebook keeps making is like, you guys could have worked with the industry. Instead, They're causing all these problems because they won't consult with Facebook or other platforms that are going to be affected by it. So talk about the leverage for a second and and how Apple is is kind of pushing this on people. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like anything, you know, it's like I'm a big Apple user. And to be honest, Eric, like and I I told you this a couple of days ago, but I'm I'm about ready to jump ship on Apple and go to Android. I never thought I would say that, (laughs) but I know. But. What they've done here is they're basically saying either it's my way or the highway is really what they're saying here. And they're not working cohesively with Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat. Like all these apps are going to be affected, you guys. It's not just Facebook, you know? And essentially, again, they're just basically saying, well, we're going to do this whether you guys like it or not. And it's going to... The app store. Touch on the app store too. Yeah, yeah. And, and the App Store as well. Like, I also heard some rumblings and, you know, obviously, don't quote me on this, but I've heard that Apple's going to start charging for apps like this. You know, like, hey, it's going to be nine ninety nine a month to download Facebook, you know, or to any apps that... And, and I heard they're taking that, kind of taking that stance, which is, I don't know, it could be hearsay. It is hearsay at this point, but we don't know. Well, we but, do know, though, we do know that they they basically Facebook was like, no. Right. And Apple said, OK, we will remove remove you from the app store. So they yes. basically told Facebook, yes, no one with an iOS phone will be able to use Facebook or yeah. Instagram. Right. And they and they basically said, unless you do these certain things. Yeah. Right. Which Facebook is now having to, like, totally change the platform now to abide by this because they don't. As much shit as you want to talk about Facebook, it is a user generated app. They they care about the user experience, so they're gonna bend to this if they have no other choice, right? And we do know that Facebook has spent already millions of dollars trying to fight this, and Apple's just saying, "No, it's our device. It's our app store. We're going to treat it the way we want it treated, and we're going to do whatever we want to do." Which to me, if if Android is not jumping on the same bandwagon, you know something's up, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. And not only that, but I, I want to touch for a second, and I don't want to get too in the weeds on this because we have a lot to cover today. But what I want to say is this will affect how we serve ads to people, and it's not going to be as accurate, right? Like, I don't want to see a bunch of ads with women's bras or something when that's, you know what I mean? The, like. Th- this this is going to affect how we target people, the audiences that we use. Like, it's not going to be tracked as well. So, could possibly very well get ads that you don't want to see. Like right now, dude, I'm a motocross guy, Facebook guy, like all this stuff. I see the ads that are are served to me for a reason, right? And yep. that's because Facebook is able to track what I do. And you know what? I'm okay with that because I'd rather have Facebook, a very smart company, send me ads that are not in any other news feed, right? And be able to pick and choose which ads I want to look at. Why is Apple taking the stance of, well, I'm actually, you're only going to track certain steps of Jason's usage on Facebook um, because that's the way we want. Why why can't that be up to me what I want to do, you know? And yes, you do have a prompt, 
But don't be surprised if you're getting all these random ads that you don't even think are necessary or that you'd want to see. And, and the Facebook platform is going to be completely changed after this. It is a big deal. It's very important, but it's not the end of the world either. And I don't, you know, I know we're talking about a lot of negative things right now. And I don't want it to sound like, oh, if I if I opt out of this, then you know it's going to be the end of the world or whatever. It's not. Well, there's going to be some tools that surface that we're still going to be able to track a certain way, and we're also going to talk very briefly at the end about third party tracking and why it's important to have some sort of third party tracking, whether it's Google Analytics or Wicked Reports, you know, something like that, to be able to to track effectively. Because essentially, what's going to happen now is. 20 conversions a day are not going to show up on the Facebook dashboard, but they could show up in Google Analytics if you have that connected. You know what yeah. I mean? Yep. So, all right, cool. So let's let's kind of just start taking it by the numbers here, Eric. What do you think? One thing that I, I, I did want to kind of throw out, and we can talk about it more when we get there, based on what you're saying, is you know what I've been wondering is the frequency of ads. Because in the new system, and we'll get this to this in a minute, you're going to have to prioritize tracking events. If someone opts out, you're only going to be able to track one event. And if that's not purchases, and, and just to explain for anybody that doesn't do ads, we always exclude purchasers. So let's say you buy you know, this really expensive whatever you buy, right? Well, we're going to exclude those people moving forward. Well, we have to know that they bought in order to exclude them from seeing the same thing they just bought 50 more times. So that's mm-hmm. another one that I think will be challenging. Have you, ha- have you thought about that at all or any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, I, I think what's going to come into to play here more detailed is we're going to have to start relying on more customer lists like in yeah. Shopify or whatever e-commerce Radio. platform. Yeah, or or if you're doing like digital products or info products or something like that, like you're going to... It's going to kind of be a pain, right? Like you're, you're going to have to upload those audiences to exclude people who've purchased because you don't want them seeing... Like if I purchase today and then I see another ad that's like a top of funnel cold ad tomorrow, I'm going to be like, dude, what the hell are these guys doing? And that does still happen. There's a lot of marketers out there that have no clue what they're doing. And they piss you off by serving you ads over and over again. But like I posed the question to our partner manager too, I said, so does that mean that the 50 conversions a week are going away? Like you guys are going to have to completely revamp the entire algorithm and the way things are done because if this goes into effect or when it does like Facebook's going to have to completely like start over again and it's going to be a while and and again we don't know exactly everything and this is a learning curve even Facebook has said and all the conversations we've had with them that we don't know everything you guys like so don't hold us to x y and z when we don't know exactly what's going to go on yep. and we, we brought up a lot of good questions they have it at marketing science and you know our partner managers milling it around with with the powers that be over there so a lot of this is going to be like we don't know and tbt right you know it's like or yep. tbd i should say tbd yep tbd so we don't know what, exactly what's going to go on so and, and i do want to emphasize one thing you just said is that if you're listening to this now is more important than ever to make sure you're listening to someone who knows what they're talking about and you know, that's something it's like, I work with Jason every day. He is a ninja of Facebook ads. He knows them in it, like up and down inside and out. And right now is not the time you want to be list. You know, we joke about it all the time. We see these, these ads and it's like, get $3 leads or 50 cents leads. And that means nothing (laughs) that, that literally means it's someone like they did that once and they're saying they can do it. Don't listen to people right now, especially with this. Because if you are running ads, you're doing leads or pretty much anything, this could majorly impact your business. So make sure you're listening to someone that is getting their information directly from Facebook. And then the other thing I want to add is that, you know, we've had specific webinars that, you know, we signed the NDA, like we can't share all the info. But one thing that I do want to emphasize here is Facebook is full force they have a solution for this. So it's not like, you know, you might hear doubt and like what's going to happen, but I I just want everybody who's listening to know that there's a solution. Um, Challenges with it, but there is a solution. We just have to do what Facebook is instructing us to do. And that's what we're going to go over in this episode. So let's jump into the solution and what people can do. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, so kind of going by the numbers here, I think like number one on our PDF download here is, you know, the impact of Apple's iOS 14 requirements on advertisers and developers. So like Eric just said, Facebook is, they're kind of revamping the platform. And basically what, what we're limited to now is essentially eight conversions per domain. Right. And, and I know Eric, you, you're a little more of a domain guy than I am. I know Facebook ads really well, but then you like, all I know is you put the damn URL in the, in the Facebook <laughs> ad and it goes to a damn landing page. Right. So, but, uh, and, well, I'm, I'm probably not that stupid, but, um, uh, you, yeah. You, so I'll explain that real quick. So basically yeah. you can have eight events and we should talk about that a little as well. You can have eight events if people agree. Or no, no, no. I'm going to let you explain that part. I'll explain sure. this part real quick. So if you have a dot .com, a, a dot, let's say you're in, you know, UK, dot UK, each of those websites supports eight events. Mm -hmm. But the second you start putting like UK dot your brand, those events, you're only going to have be allowed to have eight events across all of your prefixes. Mm -hmm. Um, or your yep. forward slash or your forward slashes. I'm, I'm using those terms because, you know, they're general. Everybody gets them. But if you have something before or after the domain, the dot com, those are only going to have eight events. Why is that important? Well, if in, an international brand, you know, has their, their primary domain and they're using forward slashes, like for, you know, the UK or France, they're only going to be able to have eight events around the globe. So, one of the things we're going to talk about first is the importance of domain authentication. Do you want to touch on that now? Uh, yeah, I mean, we can we can touch on that really quickly. I mean, really, domain authentication, You and what we're going to have to do, what you're going to have to do and as an advertiser going forward is you're going to have to register your domain on Facebook, right? And it's it's pretty easy. We can, again, maybe we'll have an episode on how to register your domain. That's because that's a big one. It and and it's you know it's funny cuz facebook will tell you oh it's super easy to do it's not that easy okay so don't think you're going to be able to set it up in 5 minutes it's easy for someone like us who runs facebook ads daily we know where to go on the platform you know we know how to do that stuff it's not as easy as facebook says it is it's pretty basic but if you don't know what DNS stuff and SSL records and all like i don't even understand that stuff but i know how to register a domain so so it's not as easy as Facebook says it is, but uh, it's pretty manageable. Like you could probably call GoDaddy and say, "Hey, I need to do this," and they they could probably step you through how to do it. Yeah, um, people can do it, and it is very important. It is it, very important to do. And again, get that PDF. It, it gives an overview, and it it is important to do. And Jason doesn't give him credit. So he he can do that. Like he knows how to do it, and you guys can do it too. But it is important to do it. And it's yeah. going to limit you if you don't. For sure. Yeah. And and, the, and for those of you who don't know exactly what those... Well, I, I should say this. I'll just be completely honest with you guys. If you guys are using tons of custom events, you're totally screwed here. <laughs> yep. Just letting you know. So what I would start doing as soon as you possibly can is switching to standard events. And what I mean by standard events are purchase, add to cart, view content, add payment info, you know, all those, right? Complete registration, schedule call, like all those events, standard events. Because here's the deal. We're, we're not going to be affected that much by the eight conversion events and the way we prioritize those. Yes, we're going to have to prioritize them. But Eric, I, I don't know about you, but like, I don't even think we have eight events running on one domain, right? Let's like maybe four. Well, and no, and you've, it's no. funny because you've been harping on that forever. And it's because you've had a partner manager for so long and you, you kind of saw what happened with ABO and CBO. So you've been harping on this forever. And so we're prepared for it because yeah, you for sure. take an action like a year ago. Yep. Yeah. So if you're using all custom events, I would suggest to either limit them to like four or five or it, but that's going to be impossible when you're in seven different countries and you're using all these custom events because you think you know, you're cool and you know how to run Facebook ads, like it's not going to work here. And I'm just glad a few years ago, we took the standard event approach 
Because really, the standard events really is all you need. And a lot of people don't even realize that you can build audiences off of the standard events and they're super accurate and they're awesome for retargeting and lookalikes and all these different things. But we're not going to be affected too much by the by the limitation of eight conversion events, but some advertisers will, you know, some advertisers that use custom events. So our advice there would be try to get to the standard event process as soon as you can, because then even if you had a couple other domains like a forward slash UK or, or something like that, you could even get by by prioritizing two or three events because in all reality, our prioritization, and we don't know exactly yet because we're still waiting to hear back, but it's going to be purchase. It's going to be probably add to cart, view content, and like, what? Well, that's four, right? Yep. They're not three, right? So, so like for us, the eight conversion, that's why we didn't freak out. And I was just like, oh, dude, we're good. You know, like, yeah, it's going to suck having to prioritize those. And we can't just like track on exactly what's going on and what you have done. But with that said, we have a plan in place. We're working on exactly how we're going to prioritize these. And it's going to be different for e-commerce clients. It's going to be different for clients who are doing digital products. It's going to be different for people, you know, clients who are doing webinars. It's going to be different for everybody. But using the standard event planning, I guess you can say, is the best thing that you could do right away to make sure that you're you're set up for this. And business managers are going to look a little different. You're going to have to go in and prioritize. And the other crazy thing about this is... So let's say we go in, Eric, today, and we, we prioritize our events. And we want to switch from purchase, add to cart, add payment info, view content, to let's say for whatever reason... Eric tells me, hey, Jason, we need to put view content at, at the top, right? Just as an example. Yeah. You're going to have to wait three days before that takes effect yeah. now, which is kind of crazy. You're like, dude, three days? Really? Like, Why does it take that, that long? Well, I don't know why, but that's what Facebook is saying. It's going to take three days for it to, to start tracking and reevaluate that prioritization of those those events. The other big thing that's also changing is if you look in business manager right now, you'll see that right now there's a there's a 28 day attribution window, right? So when you go in Facebook, you can say, you know, 28 day, you know, view through and one day click if you want to, right? So the 28 day attribution model is now gone. 28 day click through, 28 day view through, completely gone when this Apple update goes into effect. The only option that we're going to have now is seven day view through or one day click. That's all we're going to have now. So, and that's a big deal. That means that, Eric, if you see an ad about some skateboard today that you want, <laughs> um, and then yep. you go in two and a half weeks later, and let's say it's, it's after that seven day, attribution window, like that data has gone. Like we're not going to be able to say Eric saw an ad two and a half weeks later, he went in and purchased from that ad. Like those days are gone. So now what's going to happen is it's only going to track on the last action that you took. So Eric, if you saw an ad and let's say all you did was go in and view the product page, which would be a view content standard event, that's where it ends. And that's where it starts, really, because that's when it's going to get kicked back to Facebook that, okay, Eric did this view content in the last seven days, right? Yeah. Um, and if you purchase that, again, that's going to be the last thing. And that attribution is going to be a little bit delayed to Facebook. So it's not going to be like it is now where it's just a delay of a couple hours. It's going to probably be a few days, possibly, could be more. And again, these are a lot of unanswered questions that Facebook still doesn't know yet. When it launches, we're going to have to kind of wait and see on, on this kind of stuff. So, so that's a big deal, uh, especially with retargeting and how we target audiences and all that stuff. That's why I said at the beginning of the show, this is going to affect more than just, oh, yeah, I got to prioritize these events and do this. Like, this is going to change things pretty drastically, but it's okay. We just got to work through it and we'll, it, it is what it is. Yeah. So. And just to kind of clarify on, or not clarify, but kind of like simplify that part. If they say no to this prompt, the prompt that you explained, 
if they are sorry, if they say yes, they're like, go ahead and track me. Nothing changes, right? We're good. Right. But if they say no, that's that's when what Jason just said is going to come into effect. We get pretty much, and correct me if I say this wrong, Jason, but we get last click and only eight conversions that we can track in a window of seven days. So yep. it just limits majorly what we're able to do when people hit that no. And that's when like, you know, numbers start not showing up. And so, right. th- you know, that's why... In a second here, we're going to talk about third-party reporting and why knowing your numbers and being able to look at kind of like a two-point system where you're looking at business manager and your reporting is going to come into play. So with the events, one thing I did want to say is, you know, me me and Jason will vent and Jason more than me, but we'll vent (laughs) all the time about how people will teach Facebook ads. And, you know, they took a course like three years ago. And then they come out and they teach it now. If you're listening to anyone that's telling you that, stop listening because this is this is going to be a rapid, fast changing event when they roll it out. And you know, we see it all the time. We'll get inside people's accounts and we can tell they're being taught how to build things from three or five years ago, and it doesn't work anymore. So make sure you're listening to people that know what's going on with this Apple iOS update. All right, yeah. keep going. Let's let's push through to the next page here. Yeah, and 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 also just to touch on that for a second, Eric. I'm glad you brought that up because, and we're not by any means telling you you have to hire us here either. Like no, yeah, we're, we're just yeah. disseminating yeah. this information. We know it's very very important. And again, we love the resources we have at Facebook. And we know not everybody has these. Like, man, I didn't have these at one time. Um, Glad we do now. But don't take this as, oh, these guys are just doing it to like make me call them. No, dude. Like, we're not doing that at all. Like, you know, and I say it all the time. I don't need your goddamn business. You know, I'd love (laughs) to earn it. But, I, you know, like we pick and choose who we work with for a reason. And Eric's over there cracking the whip on me like, no, nah, dude, I don't want to work with this guy. You don't know, take so. them off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, I mean, it's it, this is really important information. And we want at a layman's term level, we want you to understand what's going on here because it is complicated. It's not super easy to understand. Like literally, we've already had what? Five, six conversations with our partner manager about this. And, uh, you know, Sometimes I'm still like, wait, what? Are you serious? You know? Yeah. So, but it's not the end of the world. So, so we're we're good. And and so what I want to touch on next, and I think this is probably the the last thing we can touch on, Eric. And then maybe we can record another episode diving into certain things that we think are probably the most important that we should really dive into a little bit deeper. But third party reporting is going to be like really important here, and we're not getting paid by. Wicked reports to say anything. We're not getting paid by like Google Analytics or whatever, but you are going to need some type of third part party reporting to be able to kind of even out what's going on and to know what's going on with your ads because they're not going to report on Facebook like they used to. You know, we send reports to clients every single week um, and it gives them a breakdown of what's going on. And we do that because, again, it's a third party. Like we're taking a third party action here and it's very important. So I would suggest taking a look at Wicked Reports. It's it's expensive, but it's worth it in this case because you're going to be able to look at your ads in a different way, attribute, you know, clicks and all that stuff. The attribution windows are still going to be in effect with third party reporting. It's not going to affect this 28 day attribution and the customer journey because that's a big deal. Like it's a should, huge deal. Yeah, you should know your customer journey and like, okay, they clicked on this ad, right? This video ad that we did. I thought it was going to tank, but it actually did really well. And you need to know those kinds of things. And that's the reason why we test. And you know, testing is going to be a little bit more challenging if you don't have a third-party reporting system. You're going to have to learn how to install UTMs to be able to track these at a third-party with a third party uh, tracking system, and they can teach you how to do all that. It's not that difficult. Again, everybody listening knows my background. I'm just a dumb cop here. Like, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> like if I can do it, you can do it. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're thinking about this update. It's not just 
the Facebook dashboard. Like you're, you're going to have to step outside your box a little bit and take some action on some third party reporting. So, Eric, anything you want to want to add on this? And and we're actually going to try to get a third party, like maybe somebody from Wicked, to come on and tell us and go a little bit more detail uh, about it. So, yeah, I would just say basically to to kind of put that into an analogy. It's like you go to the ATM, you deposit your money and it tells you your balance. Well, now what Apple's doing, you're going to go to the ATM, you deposit your money and you can't check how much you have, which that's how we are. We live and die like that every day inside a business manager. Our tracking has to be accurate. That helps us scale accounts up. We live and die. So now essentially to check your bank account or your results, we're going to have to check it on a third party app that also records financial transactions and syncs up. And and there was one other thing I wanted to touch on is that there are hacks around this. And I don't, obviously let's not go into them, but there are still ways to track that. And you did, you did mention that earlier through uh, building, for example, custom audiences in, in Klaviyo that will, you know, feed back to Facebook through Shopify. So the way we track is just going to change how we see the result is just going to change. And and that's ca- kind of how I've wrapped my head around it. And again, we're very fortunate to be able to afford these more expensive tracking softwares. That's something that we're we're lucky to be able to do. But they are going to become as important to check your balance. Uh, I mean, you have to know how you're doing. And so that's why those are so important. And then are there any other kind of strategies that you thought of or want to share? Or do we not want to go into that? There's Klaviyo, Shopify. There's basically third-party integrations that will help do things that we won't be able to do inside of Facebook as soon as the change happens. Yeah. I mean, no, I I think we can probably go into some stuff a little bit later. I mean, again, a lot of e-commerce stores, you're going to, you're probably going to rely on, on the Shopify numbers coming in a little bit more now instead of Facebook. And one thing I do want to preference, there's a reason why we have third party tracking is because we know that the way it is right now, like Facebook is not 100% accurate. Yeah. And if we want to run a high level agency that reports correctly, like you have to have that third party bias there to be able to know you're doing the right thing because we can't rely solely on Facebook either. That's why we have that additional third party to be able to say, okay, cool, yep, we're doing things right. Oh, shoot, actually, this ad is actually doing really well. And it doesn't always have to be ROI based either. Right, like there's a lot of different signals that we look at to know that that an ad is performing well, and it and it's not solely based on okay, I spent five hundred and I made eight hundred, right? There's a lot of determining factors here. So, but we can't stress enough that a third party is gonna you're gonna have to start using it. Whether it's Google Analytics, which is free, you're gonna have to start looking at that more. If you're an e-commerce store, you may want to start paying attention more to your Shopify numbers and if your Shopify numbers don't sync up with Facebook now, imagine after this, yeah. like it's going to be a huge difference and you're going to be scratching your head going, okay, why is Facebook reporting $5,000, but Shopify is reporting 20? Because that could be a discrepancy and it probably will be with the, this new Facebook or this new rollout here of this iOS update. So, but we'll, we'll keep everybody updated. We'll be back with another episode on probably diving into a couple topics at a time because we know it can get cumbersome. But if you're running ads and you're an agency and you don't have the ability to speak with somebody at Facebook, or if you're a marketer running ads for yourself or an agency running ads for yourself or you know a brand running ads for yourself and you stumble across this podcast, pay attention to the actions that you need to take here on this because um, it's going to be detrimental to what you're doing in the future here when this rolls out. Yep. So. And again, you guys can download that at spotlightsocialadvertising.com forward slash iOS. Awesome. All so right, guys. Eric. Well, hey, man. Great to have you on. It's actually cool to have a co-host. I can. It is, huh? Yeah. I don't have to talk the whole time, uh, ramble on about a bunch of nonsense that I'm <laughs> spitting out there. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, I appreciate it. And yeah, man, if you want to, if you need to contact us, it's, you know, you can go to, SpotlightSocialAdvertising.com. Click on the contact portion of it, and uh, you know you can you can chat with us there, schedule a call, whatever. But we really want you guys to be able to succeed with this. Uh, we don't have all the answers yet, but we're trying to get them as quick as we possibly can. And when we get them, 
we'll share it with you. So thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Catch you later. Hey, thanks so much for listening to The Truth About Social Ads. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. Please visit our website at truthaboutsocialads.com for show notes and additional episodes. And if you have time, please subscribe to the podcast and please consider rating and reviewing the show if you enjoyed it. That will help other people find us. By the way, I would love to hear from you. Please send me an email at jason at spotlightsocialllc.com with your feedback, questions, or a topic you'd like me to talk about on the show. If you send me a question, maybe I'll read it on the show. See you later. Bye.